what we have done with LinkNode, we have basically created a way to take lignin out of trees in large quantities and enrich the carbon into replace the graphite in the anode in those batteries. Hi there! When uh, electric cars take over, millions and millions of car batteries must be produced. A very important component in a car battery is the mineral graphite. But the mineral can actually run out. So today the search for alternatives is intensive. But the hunt may actually already be over. Have you ever heard about Lignode? I didn't thought so. Uh, it's extracted from trees. Yeah, you heard right. And now you will meet Lauri Lechtonen uh, at Stora Enso, which invests heavily in Lignode for car batteries. Uh, welcome to Railos Play, Lauri. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. Today. So nice to have you here. Uh, before we talk about this amazing thing, <laughs> uh, can you begin to tell us a little bit about yourself and, and Stora Enso? Very good. Yeah. So my name is Lauri Lechtonen. I'm the head of innovation for biomaterials in Stora Enso. I've been with Sturanson for four years and we have a really, really aspirational innovation pipeline on, on renewable materials and, and changing the world into much more sustainable space. Mm -hmm. And that's what Sturanso is also. Sturanso is the renewable materials company. Mm -hmm. So we are aspiring to really, really make change in different kind of value chains to really provide materials that we can grow back. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the basis for Stura Enso's uh, materials innovations and things that we do is the tree. Mm. Your asset is forest and trees. Forest and trees. Yeah. And we've been doing that for actually, we're the oldest company in the world, I think incorporate somewhere in 1300s. Oh, yeah. So we've been doing this kind of stuff for, for ages. Yeah. And, and now that world's changing, I think we have a role to play in the changing world with the same kind of uh, aspiration and the kind of capabilities that we've been doing already for hundreds of years. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Tell me, what is Lignode? So, great question. So, you mentioned earlier graphite. We need we need a lot of materials. Uh, batteries need graphite and so forth. So, Lignode is a replacement for graphite. So. There's a thing in, in trees called lignin. It's about 30% of, of, of every tree. And what lignin is, it's, it's very high in carbon content. And what graphite is, it's 100% carbon. Mm. And what batteries need is they, we always hear talk about them in batteries, we mostly hear talk about the metals, mm. like nickel, cobalt, lithium, and so forth. We sell them here to talk about the other side of the battery, which is the anode side. And that's all carbon. And that carbon today is coming from graphite. What we have done with Lignode, we have basically created a way to take lignin out of trees in large quantities and enrich the carbon into replace the graphite in the anode in those batteries. Mm. So you can replace it 100%? You can, it's your choice. Uh -huh. uh, and, and the choice comes from the fact that it's, it's, it's got performance characteristics yeah. that change the battery's performance. And it's your choice how much you want to replace or you want to replace it 100%. Mm. So we have, we have huge amounts of forest in Sweden and Finland. Uh, there should be basically, uh, basically unlimited amounts of lignode in that case, do you agree? <laughs> I, I agree. So, yeah. so, so somebody estimated that uh, the demand for, for graphite within the next 10 years would be somewhere around 4 million tons. Mm. Yeah. So we've estimated that, uh, how, so let me tell Lingnin, uh, we, we pulp trees already as, as, as business. So what we do is we take trees and we dissolve the trees and we take cellulose fibers out of those. And they, those cellulose fibers go into essential products like diapers and tissue mm. and things that we need in the world and everyday lives. And we've been doing that a lot. What we do is that part that is dissolved, it's lignin. And that lignin typically we've been, we've been burning. And it's been cycling in these systems for, for as long as we've been making mm. these essential products. So the amount of estimated lignin floating around in these systems is, is, is about 50 million tons yeah. in the world. So, so early it could on, be in 
it could be a month that it's enormous. Yeah. So early on, you didn't uh, you didn't take note of the LinkedIn. It just yeah we poured out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. We we and we we continue turn it into a bioenergy, which yeah. is a good solution. But it's a wonderful material to to do something even better. Yeah. And the even better is is providing a essential material for for electrification. Mm. Like you said, uh, today graph graphite is used in batteries, but there's only a certain amount of graphite in the world. Uh, so, so, uh, the, so the availability is a huge challenge. It is. Yeah. It is. Availability is a challenge. And part of it, the challenge is that we don't really have a lot of graphite in Europe. And if we do, only a certain fraction of the mined graphite is uh, can be used for batteries mm. because the the quality uh, uh, demand is so high, mm. and uh, and that's why we need to look at alternative solutions. Mm. And uh, and in matter of fact, this uh, because of this uh, availability of graphite deposits in the world is is not evenly distributed. There's not a lot of that in Europe. Most of this anode material today, I'd, I'd say ninety five percent is coming from China mm. and that of course comes with its own challenges mm. which but there's not a lot of graphite in the world and there's a lot of uh, trees and forests do that is do that mean that that link node is cheaper than graphite if you know what I mean yeah well so good question so in in terms of uh, manufacturing cost. I think we've always looked at we need to make anything we need make uh, as a sustainable solution. It also needs to be competitive in performance mm. and also cut. And that's our, ta- our target and aim. Nobody will use materials that are just too expensive. No. And 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 so that's that's what we're aiming. At. Mm. But is there a catch? Uh, all this sounds almost too good to be true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think like with anything you do, there's a there, there, there's a catch on saying you need to do it so that it is, it is sustainable. So when you when you're using resources, you need to use resources very, very mindfully. Mm. And in our case, what it means is that when we use trees, that we grow trees. Yeah. That's a responsibility to the generations coming after us. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the responsibility that we've been doing for, for ages as a, mm. as a company already and, and continue doing. But as a society in Scandinavia, that's really, really important for us. Mm. And that every tree that we, we use, that we plant a couple more. Mm. And we, we do that. Mm. And great thing about that is while we're doing it, we trees uh, sequester carbon, and the more trees we have, the more carbon we sequester from from mm. the atmosphere. So we're kind of solving two two challenges at the same time. If we uh, go and do this on a renewable mm-hmm. basis, but the battery manufacturers then, uh, what reactions have you got from them regarding Lignode? Uh, very very good. Yeah. So, couple of things. I mean, our performance. Is 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 exquisite, and ex- es- especially in couple of as- aspects. So, so our sustainability performance. So all the carbon that we actually have in the product, which that product is, it's carbon that's come from the atmosphere. Mm. So it is basically all sequestered atmospheric carbon mm. that we are putting into the battery. So that's one. And the other other thing that we we are very good at is is fast charging. Okay. So fast charging means uh, for 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 us as consumers, faster charging uh, uh, watches, for mm. example, and most important, faster charging cars. And when you go in the faster charging world, you start looking at can I build material efficiencies by saying instead of making everything so big that I that can drive thousands of uh, kilometers, mm. you say I make things smaller, more efficient, and and charge them just faster. But are they ready to replace uh, graphite with a uh, link node? Yes, they are ready. Mm. And uh, in matter of fact, the link node is in the classification of hard carbons. And uh, hard carbons as, as, as technology is not new. Mm. So we are not inventing the physics. We are bringing a new and um, new sustainable solution 
in, with an old, older technology, mm. which is the hard carbons. In fact, Sony was the worst, first one that launched lithium-ion batteries in the 90s. It was all done with the hard carbon technology mm. that we bring, in, mm. bring into the market. But the timeline, let's discuss it a bit. Uh, how far have you come in the process and, and when can you start using Lignode in, in car batteries in a larger scale, do you think? So today we're in a, in a demo pilot scale. So we are, we are sampling customers uh, according to the qualification processes. And, uh, and uh, we need a, a big factory, of course, to, to supply significant quantities. Mm -hmm. And we are currently in a design phase of that factory based on our pilot mm -hmm. pilot. And, and we will soon be making eventually decisions on when to build that okay. that first factory, and usually. But is a, it in the near future? Is in, it ten years ahead? Or no, <laughs> we, we're talking about in the near future. Yeah. And we've been openly communicating uh, that we we want to be on the market supplying this in 2025. 2025. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so we're not talking about a two long years from now. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, exciting! Uh, but. Today, uh, like you said, you have a small pilot factory and you're building your own factory. But do you have competitors? Yeah, so hard carbons have been on the market um, for for quite a while, but they're in really, really limited quantities because it's been hard to scale them up based on their raw materials supply. Mm. So we we don't have a, we don't have a huge amount of uh, competition. Uh, We've spent a, quite a bit of time on technology development ourselves to do this from LinkedIn, mm -hmm. and uh, today we don't we don't see anybody working working this approach mm -hmm. from from LinkedIn. But like anything in the world, good ideas uh, uh, spread, and and of course in in a in a good world, uh, everything needs to be done by several players mm. and that's what of course they uh, of the of course our customers will eventually in the long mm. term ask for have to have second supplies mm. but let's say that your your uh, bosses uh, say it okay Larry let's go for this 110 percent yeah yeah uh, do you think that will happen that Storenzo is ready to to put down a lot of money a lot of energy in this to 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 manufacture this in a really large scale yeah, well, if it's uh, possible. Yeah, so we've been openly talking about this, mm. and if you look at our investors, uh, they we we have aspiration to be a significant producer of mm. active anode materials in the market. We've been talking about a a range of eighty to hundred thousand tons of production. Yeah, and with the with the name of of uh, getting to a significant sizable business, which is meaningful for store and so on. That that we've been bullishly openly talking. Mm. talked about and not me but my my our our ceo for yeah. example but is it just uh car batteries or can you use lignode for other type of batteries yes it is basically anything that's uh, lithium ion batteries and those are used in all kinds of applications mm. ranging from this to energy storage solutions mm. so energy storage is coming big now it's yeah. you, it's 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 probably the projections are going back and forth but uh, if you if you look at the most bullish ones i mean this is going to be significantly bigger most likely than evs as mm. an energy storage mm. and it's driven by the fact that we are need as a society we need to move to renewable energy sources mm. and to do that probably you need to store that energy somewhere mm. and there is no better better technology today in many applications yeah. than batteries but is your priority right now car batteries and then you can move on to other types we, of batteries we, or energy we, storage or something like we that are, we're working with all of all all the solutions. We're, so we're pretty agnostic on this, mm -hmm. and we let the, the cell manufacturers and the and the customers customers to decide where they want to put this in in, in first. Mm -hmm. And last question. You mentioned it a bit earlier, but but you said that you have a great responsibility for our coming generations, and and you need to plant trees and you need to grow forests and so on because otherwise we have no forests. Yeah. <laughs> but but uh, you're willing to take that responsibility. It 110%. is 110 percent. 110 percent, and yeah. it's that responsibility as a company. It has been there. I mean, we will. Stuart Enzo will not have a business model in the future if we don't do this. 
and mm-hmm. it would have never had it if we hadn't done it for for ages. In fact, as a as a society in Scandinavia, we've been taking that so seriously that we've established laws. We mm-hmm. have a, a forest renewal laws mm-hmm. that 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 are in place to, for forest owners, and forest owners have been obl- obliging to those uh, for for ages already. Mm-hmm. So that is a, that I think that's in the heart of the culture of 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 where we are, and that that pledge we have mm-hmm. also as a company. I need you to promise me something. Yeah. Uh, around 2025, yeah. if we're uh, still here, uh, can you please take me for a ride in a car uh, with the link node battery? Good. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I we have a deal. You. We have a deal. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Lowry, it was very nice to meet you. Uh, and uh, good luck. Best of luck. Thank you. And. Um, Thank you for be, being here in Rayless Play. Great to be here. Thanks. Thank you for watching and watch out for new uh, exciting interviews here on Rayless Play. See you.